All right, so this is a recap of what we learned yesterday. Um, so we talked two days ago about how logarithms are the inverses of exponential functions. Um, and then we also went into switching between the two forms, exponential to logarithmic form, and we talked about solving some basic logarithms. Okay, so can someone help us with part A here? What is the inverse of y equals 5 to the x? Alexandra? Um, so this is an exponential, so I think we should expect the inverse to be like a logarithmic function. So you've got the inverse notation part, f inverse of x. Simran? Yeah, good. So uh, we can use inverse notation. This one's already like y equals, so we could say for the inverse y equals. Um, but really we, the important part is, is that we have log base 5 of x. Um, the important distinction that we kind of talked about a couple days ago is that inverse form or the inverse equation of the function needs to be y equals something to do with x. That's how we express all equations. Y is the output, x is the input. Um, so we're not, we're, it's actually kind of different than switching between the forms, okay? Um, if you did like a full solution to this, um, basically we'd be swapping x and y we'd be taking the log of both sides. And we know our log rule says we're allowed to bring down the exponent when we have a logarithm. Sorry, that's five. Oh no, it's not, that is y. And then we divide out the log of five. And uh, for this part here, we talked about what is called the change of base formula. So when I have the log of something divided by the log of something else, I can actually combine those into one single logarithm by doing log of the value in the denominator here. That becomes the base of the logarithm. And the value in the numerator is uh, inside the logarithm. So we would end up with basically this as our inverse function. You can leave y. If you started with y, you can leave y. Um, or if you want, you can use function notation to show inverse. Um, basically, guys, any exponential that I give you, if I gave you the exponential, let's say y equals half to the x, and I wanted to know what its inverse function is, it's going to be the logarithm with the same base. So this function's inverse is going to be y equals log base half of x. I don't need to see the whole solving process. That's always what it's going to be. Whatever the exponential's base is, as long as it's a really basic exponential like that, th its inverse will be the log with the same base of x. Okay? All right, let's do b and c quickly here. Rewrite 4 to the exponent 2 equals 16 into logarithmic form. Sam? 2 equals log uh, 4 16. Great. So the exponent is actually the answer of the logarithm. The base of whatever is to that exponent is the base of the new logarithm. Good. And then part C, we're going from logarithmic form to exponential. Oh, yep, sure. Can you do log 4 16 equals 2? Yeah, either way is fine. Yeah, for sure. Um, last one, switch into exponential form. Sam, go ahead. Great. Um, and you know what? This should make sense, right? Like if I calculated 6 to the exponent 3 on my calculator, I should get out 216. So it's a, it's a really kind of foolproof way. You can just check your answer and make sure that it's actually equal. Great. So remember, the answer to the logarithm is always the exponent to which the base must be raised to get us this value that's inside the logarithm. So when I ask the question log base 6 of 216, I'm asking what exponent does 6 need to be raised to to give us 216, okay? Now, so far what we've been learning is all nice numbers. And what I mean by that is it's all been a lot of whole numbers. Um, but what if it's 6 to the, like log base 6 of um, 11, right? 6 to what exponent is 11? That's a little bit harder to figure out with guess and check. Um, so we need some new methods to evaluate those logarithms. Okay, let's slide over to lesson 2. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to introduce to you what is called power law of logarithms. Um, 
you guys kind of already know this, um, but I'm just going to kind of formalize it and then connect it to the idea of exponentials. Um, so the hope is, is that we will just kind of iron out all the details from lesson one. Uh, we are going to solve problems with power rule for logarithms um, and then uh, work a little bit more with that change of base formula that I introduced to you when we were solving for inverse. Okay, so uh, our classic kind of examples where we used power law back from grade 11 were when we were isolating for an exponent. So I'm just going to do another one of those. Uh, this time it's with interest. So just to remind you, the interest formula looks like this. where A is the future amount, P is what we call the principal value, or still, again, the initial amount, um, I is the interest rate as a decimal, and N is the number of compounds within the given time period. Okay, so suppose you invest $500 in an account that pays 7% interest compounded annually, so compounded once a year. Um, how long will it take for, this amount to, for the amount in the account to double? Okay, so we have a principal value or initial value of $500. I, interest rate as a decimal, how do we express 7% as a decimal? 0 0.07. Awesome. So it's like out of 100, right? So we're taking 7 out of 100, we divide by 100, move the decimal left twice. I want to know how long it's going to take the amount that I just invested to double, meaning I want my future amount to be $1,000. Okay, N is the question mark here. Okay, now, because this has been compounded annually, basically, if I find N, which is the number of compounds within the given time period, it's actually going to be equal to the number of years that I've invested, because I'm compounding once a year for a certain number of years. So number of compounds will actually be equal to the number of years that it will take. Um, so I don't really have to do much else with N. Uh, okay, so let's plug in here. Okay, goal here before I apply what we call power rule, so when we take the log of both sides and parachute that exponent down in front, I need the base and the exponent isolated on one side. So I always have to start by dividing out any value that's out front here. And I'm just going to clean up the terms inside the bracket there as well. Okay. Unknown in the exponent, we should always be thinking, I'm going to use log eventually to isolate for this. So we would take the log of both sides. And this is what we call power rule. I often call it parachute rule because we kind of take the exponent and it gets parachuted down in front. Uh, but the official rule is called power rule. Okay, so the n comes down in front as a multiple. And then... I can divide out from n here in order to get it by itself. So I'm dividing the full log of 1.07 on both sides here. Uh, once you take the log of something, whatever is inside that logarithm is part of that expression. It has to be moved as a unit. Okay, it's like the sine of an angle, like sine of 30. I'm not going to divide out sine or, or 30 separately. I have to divide out the sine of 30 altogether. So same with logarithms. Log means nothing without something inside of it, right? Log is a function. Um, pardon? I can't factor log, actually. That's a good question um, because it's a function. So think of it like a square root, kind of. I can't just factor out a square root, right? Um, so that's kind of the idea. Log is kind of, it needs something inside of it to make sense. Same as a square root. If I just have a random square root, it means nothing until I put something underneath this square root, right? Okay, so same with logarithms. All right, has someone calculated for us? 10.2447. Did everyone else get that same thing? Yeah? Mm. So log of 2, make sure you close up a bracket if it opened a bracket, and then divide by log of 1.07. So sorry, what was it, 10.24? 2447. 2447, so... No, I got that same answer. Again? No, I, no I got the same answer. Oh, okay, perfect. Perfect. And uh, because my interest is being compounded annually, basically what this is giving me out is that I have done 10.24 compounds um, 
within that given time period. If I've done 10.24 compounds, um, I have compounded 10.24 times over 10 years, right? Or, yeah, within those 10 years, once a year. Um, so really, guys, at the end of 10 years, this is actually getting added to my principal amount once every year. At the end of 10 years, I'm not quite at 1,000. Um, so I'd have to, again, actually wait a full year to get any more interest on that amount. So technically, if it's over 10, I would actually have to say 11 years before I actually see that money. Because I don't see the money until the end of that compounding period, which is another year. So I won't be too picky about that. But technically, in order to see over uh, or around this amount, I would have to wait until that next compounding period has finished. So technically, it'd be 11 years. Um, but yeah, just after 10 years, technically um, 11 years before I actually see that money. Okay. And in fact, after the 11 years, you will have more than $1,000. So. If we were compounding regularly, it would be, we could just leave it as 10.24, but because we're only compounding once a year, I don't quite get to 1,000 at the end of that 10th year. Okay, so this is a classic question that we've done in grade 11, isolating for an exponent. Uh, this is again what we call power rule. So it basically just says if I have some log to some base of a value, I'm allowed to take this exponent and bring it down as a multiple. Um, this comes from the power law of exponents. So if we think about the power law of exponents that I reviewed with you guys, uh, power law of exponents says if I have an exponent on an exponent, like so, I keep the base and I do what with the exponents? I multiply them. What is the answer to any logarithm? What is this right here? Log base b of x. We said any logarithm is equal to what? That's the common logarithm. But what is the answer we get out from any logarithm? The exponent. Is an exponent. So what do I have here? If this is an exponent, I have an exponent on an exponent. Agreed? So I can write those two exponents as multiples of one another if I have an exponent of an exponent, okay? So the key here is that logarithms are giving us out answers that are exponents. So now I have an exponent on an exponent. From this rule, I can then get my logarithm rule that says I'm allowed to multiply those exponents when I have an exponent on an exponent, right? That's why this works. Okay. So we're going to work on some, some more evaluating here. We'll get kind of a little bit more used to um, that kind of way that we work with logarithms and actually evaluate them. We should be able to do this without a calculator. Um, so I'm going to use power rule here because I have the log to some exponent. I can actually bring that exponent down in front as a multiple. And then there was a method that I uh, showed you guys the other day where we created common bases between these two values. So the base of the logarithm and the base of what we were trying to calculate the log of. So we said if we can write 8 with a base of 2, the log base 2 of 2 to whatever that exponent is will be my actual answer there. Yeah, so I heard 3, that's good. So it's the log base 2 of 3. And anytime we have something like this, the answer is just the exponent value. So uh, that was a rule that I introduced to you the other day. So the answer to that logarithm is just 3. Okay, and then we get 15 here. Okay, again, I'll just write out the rule for you here. We said log base a of some a to the exponent b will just be equal to the exponent. Okay, and then if you're curious about that explanation again, you can uh, scrub back to that point in lesson one's video and uh, check out why that's true. Okay, square root. What kind of exponent is a square root? One over two. Jonathan? One over, two. one over two, yes. So I'm gonna first express my root as an exponent of one over two. I'm going to bring it down using power rule. 
And then we'll try this method over on the left that I used. Um, so 343, I want to express 343 with a base of 7. So 7 to what exponent equals 343? Is it 3 again? Yeah? Okay, perfect. So now we have something set up in this format. So that means that the log base 7 of 7 to the 3 is just equal to 3. And I get 3 over 2. Questions? Okay, really? I don't really need to see this step. Um, if you ask yourself the question, if you can calculate and figure this out without using the log button on your calculator, 7 to what exponent equals 343, if you get the 3 value, the answer to that logarithm is just the answer to what the exponent 7 must be raised to get 343. So you could jump right to that second point there, if you can kind of figure that out. Okay. Change of base formula, I used this uh, briefly with you guys when we were solving for inverse, but I just want to uh, kind of formalize it in a rule here. Um, so the examples that we did above are actually relatively easy to calculate because, uh, like I said before, we're working with nice numbers here, right? I can express 8 as a base of 2, and I can express 343 with a base of 7. But what happens if I can't? That's the question. Um, so let's suppose we have something like this, 4 equals uh, 1.2 to the exponent x. Um, so on one hand, we can solve this with power rule, same as we did with our example 1. So I can take the log of both sides here, and I can bring down that x using power law. Okay, and then we worked to just divide out that log from the side with the x, remembering that log and 1.2 have to kind of stay together as you move them. And then we calculate it on our calculator, right? So on one hand, we'll get the log of 4 divided by the log of 1.2, and that could be a way that we could find our answer. So I'll have you guys calculate that for me. Alexandra, what'd you get? Everyone else get that same answer? Yeah? Okay, good. So on one hand, we can calculate as we usually have using power rule. Um, we can also use something called the change of base formula. So I'll show you guys that. Okay, so in order to use the change of base formula, and this is actually really important because this is how you guys are going to calculate logarithms on your calculators. Um, what I could have done is I could have taken this and I could have jumped and made it into logarithmic form. Okay, the same way that we were working with our warm-up questions, switching from exponential to logarithmic form. Um, a lot of you guys don't have a button where you can evaluate logarithms with different bases other than 10. Some of you guys, if you have that one calculator that has the like bright blue and orange buttons, some of you guys have a special log button that allows you to enter in the base. Um, but many of you just have the common logarithms stored in your calculator. Um, so in order to calculate something like this log base 1.2 to, uh, to the 4 and figure out what that is, we actually need to use the change of base formula. Um, so anytime you want to evaluate a logarithm that is not base 10, so not the common log that's stored in your calculator, you can use the change of base formula. Okay, and we've already used it a couple times, but we've used it in reverse, in our uh, inverse solving questions. Um, so it basically says that I can take any log to some base of A, so log base B of A, and I can express this as the log of A over the log of B, or I can even choose the base of the logarithm that I want, as long as the bases are the same. So here, technically, I am choosing a base. What's the base I'm choosing if I just say the log of A over the log of B? It's 10, yeah. So I really am choosing a base there. I'm just choosing it to be the common logarithm because that's what's in my calculator. Um, so really, this is log base 10 of A and over log base 10 of B. 
Now, could I choose log base 7 of A over log base 7 of B? Yes, I could. Okay, so this is how the change of base formula works. Um, again, I want to make sure that um, I don't choose a base of 1 because 1 to any exponent is not is going to give me back 1, right? So I don't usually choose bases of 1 in this uh, change of base formula. And uh, we want to make sure all of our values are greater than 0. I can't take the log of things that are 0 or negative. Okay, we learned that from the equation of the logarithm. Uh, logs have an asymptote here at 0, and they don't go into the negative section unless transformations are made. But we'll get to that later. Okay, so. I'm going to show you guys uh, how we could also solve this expression right here using the change of base formula. So the first thing that we would do is we would switch from exponential into logarithmic form. And then uh, I can actually just express log base 1.2 of 4 as the log of 4 over the log of 1.2. Okay. If you've listened to nothing else I've said in this explanation, you do need to know this part because this is how you enter th this into your calculator. Right? And we see it up here as well. Right, So you see when you use power rule to solve, you end up with the log of 4 over the log of 1.2. Now when we use change of base formula, it says the log of A goes on top and the log of B goes on bottom here. So that's what we did um, here. Okay, And then you'll get the same answer. It'll be 7.0, whatever it was, 7.6035. Okay, So we're going to practice that. Um, for those of you that have like the log button that has like various bases that you can enter in, you can use that. Um, but you also will need the change of base formula for other things. So we'll practice with change of base formula. Um, so again, this one's really hard to solve using guess and check because I can't make 23 have a base of 6. 6 to what exponent gives me 23? I don't know. Uh, but I can use the change of base formula. We evaluate this as the log of 23 over the log of the base, which is 6. So you can actually just enter that right into your calculator, and it will give you the answer uh, to the logarithm. So what do we get here? 17.197. Pierce, did you get the same thing? OK. Check it for us. Great. And this is the exponent. Oh, you got 1.7? That actually makes much more sense to me. Oh, why did I put it? Oh, I did log 0.3 and log 1.2. <laughs> um, so 1.7. Five. Yeah, okay, you guys can check your answers um, by checking if six raised to the exponent 1.75 is approximately equal to 23. Is that true? Is it off a little bit? Did we do some rounding? Yeah. So if we round a little bit here, you'll find that it will be off a bit. Um, but this is basically the answer that we're finding, right? 6 raised to what exponent gives us 23? Well, 6 raised to the exponent 1.75 gives us 23. That's what logarithms are giving us. They're giving us out the exponents. OK. How can I use change of base formula to calculate B? Alexandra? Log 14 over log 1 half. Great. So 1 half raised to what exponent gives me 14? That's the question that's being asked here. Alexandra? Negative 3.807. Okay. Did everyone else get that? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And if you're not sure, you do a little check and see if 1 half raised to the exponent negative 3.0 or 3.8073 equals approximately 14. And we see that it does. Perfect. Okay, so you should always kind of be able to know whether your answer is correct or incorrect. You can do these checks. Any questions? All right, so that's the change of base formula. That's how we can enter anything, any logarithm with any base into our calculator. 
Sam's got that special calculator that can do it without change of base. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Did you find it? Yeah. OK. So I'm going to show you guys uh, two methods to solve something like this. So similar to what I showed you above, I just want to uh, show you with a different example here. So method one is using power law or power rule. Method two is going to be using change of base. Okay, um, I've asked this on like quizzes and tests before, like show me two different ways that you could solve this. It's also just good to know how to solve things in a variety of ways. You can kind of check your work and make sure that it lines up with both methods, right? Okay, so power law is your classic way of solving that you guys are used to. Um, it will involve us taking the log of both sides. And then we'll use power law to bring it down in front, the exponent. And then we'll divide out that log of 2 to get y by itself. Okay, so I think you guys are pretty familiar with this method. So we'll just calculate on our calculators log of 100 over log of 2. What'd you get? 6.6? 6.64. Any more decimals? So 6.44? Okay. So we'll round to three decimals here. Everyone else get that? Yeah? Okay. The other method is the new method, which is the change of base method. Um, so what this requires us to do is first switch into logarithmic form. So can someone switch from exponential form into logarithmic form for me? How do I switch this into logarithmic form? What's the base? So it'd be log to 100 equals y. Great. Right. So the answer is the exponent. The base of that exponent becomes the base of the logarithm, and the 100 is what we're taking the log of. Okay, so we'll switch into logarithmic form, and then we're going to apply the change of base formula. So how do I evaluate log base 2 of 100? That's what we just did up here. What's the change of base formula for log base 2 of 100? Well, what did I do up here? Log base 6 of 23 was log of 23 over log of 6. So what is log base 2 of 100? Sorry, do you know? One more time. Log base 6 of 23 is log of 23 over the log of 6. So what's log base 2 of 100? It's log of 100 over log of 2, right? So that's change of base formula. And then you guys will notice that I'm calculating the same thing here, right? The log of 100 over the log of 2. I should get out the same answer for this. Okay? So that's using change of base formula. Good? Questions? Okay. If you want to check your answer, do 2 to the exponent 6.644 and see if it's close to 100. Okay. Uh, a couple application questions. These should be pretty quick. You guys are kind of used to these types of questions. Um, so we have a population of a town that's currently 78,322 people. The population grows on average by 3% per year. When will the population of the town reach 15,000 or 150,000? Um, okay. So 
I'm going to stick with our classic formula from grade 11, but I'm going to introduce a couple more like formal formulas for these things uh, a little later for you guys. Um, the big thing is, is that if you grow by 3%, we want to think of this as 100% of the initial population plus an extra 3%. So really, when I say I grow by 3%, I want 103% growth, right? So 100% of what exists already plus an extra 3%. If I were losing 3% per year, I would do 100% minus 3% because I would be left with 97% uh, of the population each year, okay? Um, so my A value, my initial value is 70, uh, 78,322 people. My future population here is 150,000, okay? As my B value, I want to express the percentage of growth as a decimal, okay? We never actually use, well, we usually don't use percentage of growth as a percentage. Yeah, so your B value will be 1.03. And then X, remember, is total time over the time it takes for one of those growths to happen. How often is the 3% growth happening per year? That's the growth period right there. So this is total time over one year. So really X is just going to equal T years. Okay, so we're subbing into this formula from last year. And our goal is to isolate for an exponent. So I know because I'm isolating for an exponent here that I will use log eventually. Before I do anything with log, I'm going to divide out that 78,000. I need the base and the exponent alone on one side. Okay, if you, I'm not gonna be too picky about you leaving these in um, like fraction form, but if you get a repeating decimal, I would say you need to leave this in fraction form. If you get a finite decimal where it's just like 2.045, then put it as the decimal, that's fine. Um, so what do we get here? Is it a repeating decimal or is it like? <coughs> and that's it? Yeah. Okay. Well, it, it goes on to like different numbers. Okay, then I will, I'm, I'm gonna leave in fraction form then. Okay, I don't wanna do any rounding until I get to my final answer here. So this is what we have. Okay, I'm gonna solve this using the change of base method because this is a new method that we've been working on. So I'm gonna switch this into logarithmic form. Um, so the base is 1.03. The answer is the exponent. And the value that goes inside is 150,000 over 78. 1322. Okay, so I'm switching into logarithmic form from exponential form. Okay, I can switch freely as I'm solving here. And now I'm going to use the change of base formula. The change of base formula says I can do the log of whatever I'm taking. So in this case, 150,000 over 78,000 over the log of the base, which is 1.03 in this case. Okay, you will get the same calculation if you use power law. I just want to go over this method with you guys because it's new for us. Okay, so make sure the fraction in the top goes into your logarithm in brackets. Um, we'll calculate this out. Okay, and let's round to like three decimal places here if necessary. Exactly? Sorry, nine, eight, four. Oh, three, five. Okay, so we'll go four. And unit of measurements here? I got seconds, I got days, I got years. So if this is in years, then your answer will come out in years. 
So this will be years. Okay, could we say maybe like approximately 22 years? I think that would be fine in our final answer, but uh, we're going to say therefore in about 21.984 years, or if you say 22, that's fine as long as I can see your answer up here. Um, the population will be 150,000 people. Okay, this is part of my answer as well because I'm actually interpreting what I've just found. It's good to be able to do the calculation, but if I don't know what that means, um, that's kind of a problem. Okay, so your interpretation of these questions is important too. Okay, can you use power law? Of course you can use power law. Same as we did last year, that's fine. I just want to practice with change of base. Yep. Uh, yeah, you could. Yeah, similarly, because we'd have to add the 100%. Oh, we'd have to add that 100% growth to the 3% anyways. So by adding 1 to 0 0.03, you'll get the same kind of setup. Yeah, for sure. Okay, one more. Value of the average vehicle decreases by 18% per year. Usually it's about like 50% in the first year and then like gradually after that. Um, but yeah, cars lose a lot of their value. Not great investments. Um, if an SUV is purchased for 45000 when will its value be 12250 Okay, so future value, 12250 Initial value, 45000 Okay, this is what I was talking about with percent decrease per year. So if I decrease in value by 18% per year, how much of the car's value remains each year? It would be, uh, it would be 82. 82% of the car's value remains each year, yeah. So I would calculate my B value. If I'm decreasing by a percentage, I'm taking 100% of the value that exists, and I'm subtracting 18% each year. So 82 remains. So as my B value, I'll express this as a decimal. So 0 0.82, okay? For our x value, how often is our car's value decreasing? For every year. Okay, so again, it's like t over one year here. So total time will be end up equaling the x value. All right, let's plug into our formula. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, you could use the interest formula for this, but it would have to be 1 minus i, not 1 plus i, because it's decreasing and not growing. Okay, why don't you guys take a second, uh, try to use change of base formula here, see if you can do that. Um, so first we want to get that 45,000 divided out, um, but I'm going to give you guys just a minute to try this on your own. So if you try to use change of base formula here, uh, we would still need to start it out the same way that we always uh, start out these solving questions, and that's to divide the 45,000 out. Now you do get a repeating decimal if you do that. Um, so I would leave that in fraction form. Okay, and again, you can use power law here. That's fine. Um, but I'm going to show you the other method just so you can get used to it. Um, so I would be switching into logarithmic form by doing log base 0 0.82 of the fraction that we have on the left-hand side. And that will be equal to the exponent, which is t. And then I'm going to use the change of base formula that says I can calculate this in my calculator by doing the log of 12,250 over 45,000 divided by the log of the base, which is 0 0.82. Uh-oh, did you forget to close a bracket, perhaps? What did you guys get? Pierce, what did you get? Uh, 6.56. Agreed. We got 6.556, if we're rounding to three decimals. 
Unit of measurements? Measurement, I should say. Years. Years. The answer uh, or the growth period is in years, so I will get the total time out in years as well. Okay. And then you're going to just interpret your answer. Therefore, the value of the car will be 12,250 in about 6.556 years. Uh, if you're saying 6.5, it would be 6.6 because .6, the 5 rounds the other 5 up. Okay. Um, guys, can I caution you? I have a lot of people sometimes um, that will start to kind of uh, make up their own math here and cancel out these logs because I have log over log. doesn't work that way. Okay, um, logarithms work the same way that sine and roots and things like that work and exponents, right? So if I had x squared over y squared, I can't just cancel out the exponents. This is not equal to x over y. That's a big math crime, right? Same thing if I have the sine of 30 over the sine of 60, I can't cancel out the signs. Um, they're functions, they're not values. Um, so the log, just because I have log over log doesn't mean I get to cancel the logs, okay?